what we have to do if we're going to cut our fossil fuel use, we have of course to reduce the amount of energy we need by being much more efficient. And with buildings we, we can be twice as efficient without any great difficulty. We just have to do it. We also then have to get our energy from other sources. And um, renewable sources are, are, are very attractive in many ways. Um, just over there, to my, to my left here, there is a wind farm. Well, there are hillsides and they glint in the sunlight and it's not bad looking, providing of course it doesn't cover everywhere, providing they're sited carefully and providing wind farms don't uh, get in the way of, uh, of other activities. Here in Wales, we have some of the biggest tides in the world. In the Severn Estuary, we, there's a very big tide. We can get energy from, from the tide coming in and going out, going through turbines on the way, barges or tidal stream turbines. We can do that in the Severn Estuary. We can do it off the North Wales coast, um, Liverpool Bay and so on. There are proposals or possibilities for getting something like 10 or even 20% of our total electricity needs in the UK from tidal and wave sources because we have waves coming in on the swell from the Atlantic and you, you can generate electricity that way too. So there's a lot of possibilities in that sort of marine side of, of energy also to, to get new sources of energy. Then there is what we often call biomass and biomass may be special crops you grow in order, in order to burn the crops or put them into digesters or create gas from them, whatever it may be, in order to you use them for energy. Well, there's also an awful lot of possibilities from waste. We generate a lot of waste, agricultural waste, um, of a lot of our farm, farmyards. Um, waste, domestic waste, a lot, of, a lot of that can be used also to, um, to give us energy. In fact, it's been estimated that worldwide, if we, uh, we could get 10% of the world's energy from the use of agricultural and forestry waste um, without, you know, without too much difficulty. We just have to do these things and make sure that we think all the time about the energy content of material we throw away, what we can do about it. So that's a further possibility. Um, and then of course there are solar, solar energy. Um, and the possibilities there, particularly in sunny parts of the world, are large. Only a very small part of the world's area would be sufficient, of the land area of the world, the desert land area of the world, would be sufficient to provide all the world's energy needs, electricity needs, for instance, without, again, without a great deal of difficulty. We, the price of photovoltaic cells, the, on this roof here, on this garage roof, I have a, a four kilowatt peak um, array of solar cells which feed into our electricity supply we can't use it all during the day so it then has to uh, we have to we feed it back into the grid um, and th that gives us a good feeling of course that we're helping to supply our own electricity resource and also helping other people to get some of what they need um, so that's another possibility and then there are uh, also solar thermal sites that you can you can put mirrors, an array of mirrors, concentrating sunlight onto, onto a, a boiler, um, create a steam engine by using that solar energy focused on the boiler. And at the same time, you, uh, uh, so you can get energy from a normal steam engine, the process, but the, the, a lot of condensed water comes out of that too. So you could use that as a, a source of desalinated, desalinated water in areas where there is no water. Um, for instance, in the places like the North Africa desert and elsewhere, where you can get desalinated water that way. So there's lots of, and you could, people have estimated, you could very easily, it would cost quite a bit, but it wouldn't cost so much considering the, what we spend money on in our world, like wars. If you spend that sort of money on this sort of project, you'd really do a great deal. You could supply the whole of Europe's electricity from the North African deserts if we thought that was a secure enough supply and so on. But there are lots of possibilities. And we have to go into all these, all these areas to see what we can do about it.